experiencia y tienes que saber ¿no? bueno Hello, good evening. How are you? Good evening, teacher. Good How evening. are you? How are you? How have you been? I am, I am getting better every day. As you can see, I am oh, better. Oh, yes, you're better now. <laughs> How do you feel? Does it, does it hurt? It hurts uh, uh, yet, but I am getting better every day because okay. I am drinking antibiotic and another kind of medicine. Okay, very good. That's good to hear that you're better. Uh, you, you just have to be careful, right, with your job because that happened in yes. your job, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> but it's good to see you. Yeah, I think that you're better. You look better. Very good. Yes. Let's see, Raphael. I was break down. <laughs> <laughs> All this day, I have been break. I have been breaking down. Yes. It used yes. to be past perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, actually, uh, the, the first day was like really, really swollen. It was, it looked really bad, but now you yeah. look better. Yes. Yes. Very thanks good. God. <laughs> yeah, thanks, God. Perfect. Let's see. We have Rafael, Ana Maria, Jose. We have Porfirio. Hello. Have, good evening. Good evening. We have Claudia and we have Jose Isaias and Jose Francisco. Very good. Perfect. Now we are going to finish uh, this week with a module two, right? Con el módulo dos, section four. Probably you already finished, but I don't know if you have questions about this. Preguntas de alguna de las secciones. Uh, ya sé que la sección uno ya la reporté. Ya vieron ellos sus screenshots. Esperamos que se, se pues, se arregle eso con el tech support, porque ellos ven, lógicamente ven lo que ustedes escriben, y aquí pues aún a algunos les aparece que está mal, ¿verdad? La 3 de la 1.2. But besides that, I don't know if you have any questions, any other question with um, any other section, section 2, 3, 4, any of the final exam, any question? Or you have you have done all of that already. Ya lo completaron? In my case, yes. 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 Okay, perfect. That's good. Because in that case, you won't have any problems, right? With your diploma or with these levels. Ya lo completaron, no van a tener problemas con el diploma que les van a dar. Now, today we are just going to review the things that we have in section four, right? Which are... I think that you already uh, practiced with the information over there. Let's see. For example, the lesson here is by the end of this lesson, participants will practice using reduce relative clauses. So we are going to study relative clauses today. Okay, let me see. I'm going to share uh, this information, I guess, on Mother's Day. Si ya terminaron todo, entonces... El Día de las Madres, yo les voy a compartir eso. Remember that on Mother's Day, we don't have classes, right? It's a day off. Okay, so if there's any change, I will let you know. Si hay algún cambio de algún día, alguna fecha, yo les voy a hacer saber. But uh, right now, we are going to finish uh, with this section, section four, right? So, uh, this is the information that you found in the platform right this is the objective and this is the reduced relative clauses for example it says you can shorten a relative clause by dropping the relative pronoun and the verb be so sometimes when we use relative uh, relative clauses as you can see here it says someone who or that is able to think quickly might be a good surgeon right or a person who, or a person that is looking for adventure could be a private detective. Or a person who, or a person that is training music might be a good DJ. But uh, we can drop it, right? Instead of saying a person, someone who, or a person who, right? As you can see, we can uh, use, uh, you, you can use, we can use a gerund instead. Podemos usar un gerundio, right? For example, someone, who needs 
job security might not want to be a jazz musician. Someone uh, needing job security, right? Someone needing job security. So it's the same, es lo mismo. Es lo mismo, pero lo podemos decir de una manera diferente. Someone that needs, someone needing, right? Job security. It says in many, in many relative clauses, who, that, has, can be replaced by with. Uh, that is another option. This is another option. A person who has a good voice could be a good TV journalist. So a person with a good voice, right? With a good voice uh, could be a good TV, journal TV journalist. So this is a other uh, other ways to say reduce relative uh, relative clauses, right? We can reduce it, not that much, but we can do it, right? So do you know what a relative clause is? Saben que es una relative clause o una clause? Do you remember that? Probably you have studied that before. Eso ya lo estudiaron, verdad? En otros cursos. Relative clauses. Yes, but it is it to say a sentence in a different way, maybe more shorter. Yes, exactly. And uh, what is a clause? You remember that? Una cláusula. Cláusula, uh huh? And a clause can have a verb, or it doesn't have a verb. Uh, if I remember well, I think that it, it can have an object, an object, and an other, and mm -hmm. um, I, I don't remember very well. It's, it, it can be used a verb. Okay, who who knows that that answer? Quién sabe? Las cláusulas o las clauses llevan verbos o no llevan verbos? The sentences here, that sentences that we use it with uh, a subject, a verb, and a complement, right? But clauses, can we use verbs in clauses? I don't remember. No, don't, you don't remember. Okay, we are going to remember, right? Uh, because you already know this. Eso ya, ya, ya lo saben. Probably you just need to remember. Yes, uh, for example, in this sentence, right? Someone who needs job security might not want to be a jazz musician, right? What is the clause there? ¿Cuál es la cláusula ahí? Who in that? Exactly. That it who or that needs job security. job security. Very good. So that is a clause. Esa es la cláusula. Se llaman relative clauses. They are called like that because we use relative pronouns, right? Do you remember relative pronouns? Who, which, that, all of those are relative pronouns. That's why we call them relative clauses. And yes, they do have a verb. Ellos sí tienen verbo, las clauses tienen verbo, but they don't make sense by themselves, right? No tiene mucho sentido al decirlas a ellas solas por separado. Por ejemplo, who needs job security, right? Uh, it conveys a complete message? No, right? Who needs job security? Who has a good voice, right? What is the subject? Who? What is the verb? Has. What is the complement? A good voice, yes, but it doesn't make sense, right, by itself. No tiene sentido por ella sola, ella solita no. So it depends on a sentence. Depende de una oración que sí tiene sentido. So clauses, they give extra information, right? Extra information. Um, this information can be relevant, can be very important, or... Sometimes it's not that important, right? So that's what we are going to learn with clauses. So now we know that relative clauses, they do have verbs, but they don't make sense by themselves, right? They need something else. They need an independent sentence. Very good. Now, um, we're going to uh, practice with this. 
actually this is a reading and it says uh compare with a part another part and listen and check we're going to listen these sentences so do you know steve jobs do you know who that is who is steve jobs the person that create apple the company Ex exactly it's the person who uh, founded apple exactly and okay. is he still alive or is he dead no he is dead because is, he that uh -huh. cancer yes he had cancer right exactly unfortunately but uh yes he was really intelligent and actually he he did like they cre he created iPhones and Macs and all of this brand, right? That was really uh, innovative at that time. So we are going to listen some um, some facts about Steve Jobs, and you are going to let me know which one is the correct one. For example, number one, right? He was born in New York, in San Francisco, or in Texas, right? So we are going to know that, right? He was born in, uh, no, this is the same, right, right? Number two, he was a star student. He dropped out. He was asked to leave in college, right? Number three, his first job was with a company that made video games, TVs, computers. Four, the Apple Macintosh was the first successful computer to use a mouse, a keyboard, or a USB port. Five, in 1986, he co-founded Pixar, Handmade Films, or DreamWorks. Six, Steve Jobs died of cancer in 2010, 2011, or 2012. And he was 46, 56, or 66 years old when he passed. Okay, we are going to listen, and then you are going to let me know. Uh, the answers okay this is just a listening exercise it's really easy right so no worries about this let me see here just let me check if what time okay five point twenty eight one Steve Jobs was born in San Francisco in 1955. 2. He dropped out of Reed College in Oregon after just six months. 3. His first job was with Atari, the video game company. 4. The Apple Macintosh was the first successful computer to use a mouse. 5. He co-founded Pixar in 1986, the company that produced Toy Story. 6. He died of cancer of the pancreas in 2011. 7. He was only 56 years old when he died. Okay. 5.29 very good perfect so uh did you listen to the sentences yeah okay yes. what is number one san francisco. san francisco he was born in san francisco very good in college he was or he dropped out dropped out what is the meaning of dropped out abandonar dejar. abandonar the heart yes yeah. so he he left college right he dropped out college very good Number three, his first job was with a company <laughs> that made video games. Video games. Video games. Video games. Perfect. <clears throat> Four, the Apple Macintosh was the first successful computer to use. A mouse. A mouse. A mouse. A mouse. Perfect. In 1986, he co-founded Pixar. 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 And six, Steve Jobs died of cancer in? 2011. Two thousand eleven. Two thousand eleven. He was how old? Fifty six. Fifty six. Very good. Perfect. You see, it was really easy, right? So, he was a person who was a really uh, innovative uh, at that time. But we are going to see some examples for. Let's see here. 
for clauses, right? So these are uh, the answers, right, for Steve Jobs, right? As you already see, all of them are correct. But we have here uh, defining relative clauses, right? Relative clauses, as you already know, they can be defining or non-defining relative clauses. So we are going to check some examples right now. Let me see if I can play it in a separate window. Okay. Julia's the woman who works in the office with me. It's a self-help book which teaches you how to relax. That's the house where I was born. Two. Is Frank the man whose brother plays for Manchester United? It's a plant whose leaves change colour in spring. Three. I've just had a text from the girl I met on the flight to Paris. This is the new phone I bought yesterday. Okay, these are defining relative clauses, right? And as you can see, we can use who, that, which, where, right, also. That's the house where I was born. Um, who's, right? Who, that, and so on, right? Depending um on who we're talking about so this um give essential information all of the information or extra information is not that extra right it's essential information all of these sentences with essential information are called defining relative clauses as you can see it's just uh saying like um information about the subject right for example in number one julia's the woman who or the woman that works in the um, in the office with me, right? Julius is the woman who works in the office with me. So that is essential information. We cannot omit that information and actually we cannot break it, right? It's part of that sentence. And all of these sentences, they provide uh, essential information. Let's see the next one. 5.30. This painting, which was painted... So these are relative, uh, sorry, non-defining relative clauses. They uh, provide extra information, yes, but this information is not essential, right? What is the difference? The difference is that they are between commas, and that's it. Uh, since they are between commas, we can omit that part. That is information that is not essential to our conversation or to the sentence. For example, this painting, which was painted in 1860, is worth millions of pounds. So the important information is that it's worth millions of pounds. Last week, I visited my aunt, who's nearly 90 years old. So who's nearly 90 years old is not important information. Uh, Beaufort, where my grandfather was born, is a beautiful little town. So where my grandfather, where my grandfather, uh, grandfather, sorry, where my grandfather was born, is not essential, right? And the last one, my neighbor, whose son goes to my son's school, has just remarried. So that part between commas is not essential. So when you see these kind of sentences, uh, we can identify these ones like non-defining relative clauses. They are relative clauses, but they are not essential. And since they are not essential, they are non-defining relative clauses. Questions about this? Preguntas? No questions. Okay, very good. So it's really easy, right? Actually, we don't have to, uh, a lot of rules. We just need to know uh, pronouns and also uh, relative pronouns and also what is a clause, right? the definition of a clause. So let's see. Uh, Rodrigo, are you there? Rodrigo, Daniel, Melendez, Mayen? Yes, this is Ryan here. Oh, thank you. Can you read these examples, please? 
Okay. Reduce relative clause. A person working as a surgeon needs to be creative and smart. And the other one is a person working as a surgeon. It's the same, right? Yes. A exactly. person working as a surgeon needs to be creative and, and smart. smart. And the B. Uh -huh. Exactly. We have omitted, over there says, we have omitted uh, the relative pronoun and the B form, right? A person who works, right? Or who is working as a surgeon, right? In this case, it's not that we are omitting the verb to be, it's that we are using uh, a gerund, right? So that's how uh, we contract or reduce relative clauses. So a person who works, uh, we can um, we can use these examples also, right? Uh, this was in the platform, in the video, but uh, we are going to omit that because actually it's, uh, we don't have that many examples and uh, it can be kind of confusing if we use relative clauses and if we need to reduce relative clauses. Actually, we can do it, right? But uh, we don't think as them as relative clauses. We, we think as gerunds or infinitives, right? Or adjectives, right? To describe the, this person, right? So, but they, they are working as a substitute, right? If we can substitute that, they are working as gerunds. Not, not as past possible, right? Now we have a reading here. Let me see, because I want to check this. We have a reading and we are going to check this with uh, relative clauses, right? We're going to answer some relative clauses with this. So let's see, Rodrigo, can you choose someone uh, from your classmates, please, just to read number one the Macintosh classic please okay and um, Eliu Fuentes Eliu can you read number one please of course yes <clears throat> number one the Macintosh classic was the personal computer that was made by Apple in 1990 it had nine inch monochrome screen and a four megabyte memory it was cheaper than earlier Apple computer and very easy to use. It was the first commercially successful computer. Very good, perfect. Elio, choose someone else to read number Zulma. two. Zuma, okay. Zuma, read number two, please. Okay. <laughs> Steven. Wozniak. Uh, Wozniak. Okay. Uh, is the American computer engineer and programmer whose computer designs became the original Apple uh, I and Apple II computer. He and Steve Jobs became friends when they were both working at Hellwell Park. They start marking computer in Joe's parents' garage. And together they funded fund, fund Apple computer, now Apple in 1976. Very good. Suma, choose someone else, please. Bien, okay. Mercy? Okay, Mercy, can Mercy you read? Uh, can you read number three, please? Mona Simpson. Yes, um, Mona Simpson is Steve Jobs' sister. Jobs was adopted when he was born, but in the 1980s, he found his biological mother who told him that he had a sister. Mona and Steve met for the first time in 1985 when she was 25 and he was 30. And they became very close. They kept the relationship secret for a year until Mona introduced Steve as her brother at the party that she gave to celebrate the publication of her first novel, 
anywhere but here. Perfect. Mercy, choose someone else to read number four. Alejandra Mendoza. Alejandra Mendoza. Are you there, Alejandra? Yes, teacher. Okay. Uh, read number four, please. Mountain View is the city in California where Steve Jobs grew up. Mm -hmm. He was born in San Francisco and was adopted by Paul and Clara Jobs. When he was six years old, the family moved to Mountain View, which was becoming a center for electronics. People began to call the area Silicon Valley because silicon is used to manuf manufacture electronic parts. Very good. Silicon is used to manufacture electronic parts. Uh, Alejandra, choose someone else to read number five. Let me see. Jose Isaias Portillo. Okay, Jose Isaias. Can you read number five, please? Okay, okay teacher. Uh, this is the logo that was designed by Jonathan Mark, a Chinese design student from Hong Kong has a tribute to Steve Jobs when he died. The design, which used Jobs' silhouette, incorporated into the pipe of a white apple logo, became a worldwide internet sensation. The teenagers say that Jobs has inspired him to become a designer. Very good. The teenagers teenager said that Jobs had inspire him to become a designer very good perfect so what we're going to do right now is as you can see in this reading they were talking about steve jobs the information about macintosh and they were using a lot of um defining relative clauses right for example um mountain view is the city in california where steve jobs grew up and a lot of other sentences right defining clauses so it says here, cover the text. Uh, we have covered it already. And then complete the sentences with who, whose, which, that, or where. In some cases, two answers are possible. So number one, the Macintosh classic was the personal computer. Which? Which, very good, was made by Apple. Very good, in 1990. Very good, Rafael. Let's see number two. Can you read it, Alejandra? Stephen Wozniak is the American computer engineer who's founded Apple Computers with Steve Jobs and mm -hmm. that computer. Design became the original Apple first and Apple second computers. Mm, very good. That computers or which probably we are going to check the, the responses later. Let's see. Mercy, can you read number three, please? Mona introduced Steve as her brother at the party. Um, Mm -hmm. That or which or whose? Which one? Uh, when I choose her, Steve as her brother at the party. I don't know when she gave to celebrate the publication of her first novel. Mm -hmm. Can be possible the party where she gave or that she gave to celebrate the publication of her first novel. Let's see someone who hasn't participated yet. Um, Nady, can you read number four, please? Very good. Mountain View is the area in California where Steve Jobs grew up. And let's see, Porfirio, can you read number five, please? Porfirio, can you hear me? 
uh, Jonathan mask design uh, were used to job seal how to incorporate into the bite of white apple logo became a worldwide internet sensation sensation very good okay silhouette right that is the the pronunciation silhouette the silhouette silhouette right silhouette very good so let's see the responses right sorry number one is that right the macintosh classes classic was the personal computer that or which is okay um number two stephen wozniak is the american computer engineer uh who or whose is okay founded apple computers with steve jobs oh sorry and whose computer designs became the original whose what is the meaning of whose w-h-o-s-e ¿Qué significa who's? Cuyo. Cuyo, exactly. Cuyo, right? Or the quien, right? And computer designs became the original. Very good. Number three, Mona introduced Steve as her brother at the party that or which she gave, right? Very good. Mountain View is the area in California where Steve Jobs grew up. And the last one, Jonathan Mac Design which used job silhouette incorporated into the bite of a white apple logo became a worldwide internet sensation so which which remember that is for things right who is for people and that can be for both right can be for people and for things and if we are talking about places is where right donde donde se dio esto donde ocurrió lo otro etc right very good so this is extra information because uh, probably you were going to need it, right? To know about relative pronouns. And uh, this is the information that I found on the internet, right? About relative, as I was explaining before, it says we use defining relative clauses to give essential information about someone or something, information that we need in order to understand what or who is being referred to. A defining relative clause usually comes immediately after the noun it describes. O sea, inmediatamente después de el nombre que describe, ¿verdad? Look at the following examples. They're the people who want to buy our house. Here are some cells which have been affected. They should give the money to somebody who they think needs to the, needs the treatment the most. So as you can see, who is for people, right? Who is for people, which is for animal or objects, whose is to refer possession, right? Como decía, cuyo o de quien, ¿verdad? That can be for people, for animal, for animals. It, it can replace who or which. Where is for places. And also we can use when, right? When is time, right? When. And we have more information here, right? Relative pronouns, who, which, that, whose, right? And we have also people, things, and animals, in which, in this case, we use which, that, or whose, or which, right? And people is who, or that, right? And also relative adverbs. Relative adverbs is where, when, and why, right? We went to the restaurant where we had met. I never forget the day when I first met him. It was late. That was the reason why I didn't call you. So do you have any questions? Preguntas acerca de esto? This is just for relative clauses, right? This is just for relative clauses. It's like a lot of information, but actually uh, this is just a review probably because you have studied this before. Do you remember that? Yes, no? Yes. Yes. yes, right. You remember now. Yes, very good. So that's how we use it, right? Okay. Now. Pero, now. Perdón que eso no viene al caso, pero me, me pegó un gran susto cuando la compañera encendió la, la, la cámara y escuché un chochito como que lloró bien feo. Y really? estaba en el perrito, sí. <laughs> I didn't listen to that. No escuché. El perrito, si está bien, dice Ana María. Escuchó así como un ruido de perrito. 
<laughs> yeah, I didn't listen to that. Sorry, but probably he's. Neither do I. Neither do I. Tampoco. Yeah. <laughs> okay, very good. Very good. So we are going to continue. Since you don't have questions with relative clauses, como no tienen preguntas de relative clauses, yeah, we are going to use them, right? It says, in this class, participants will discuss personal creativity and practice the lesson vocabulary. So, uh, this is a listening, right? I think that we have enough time to complete that. And we have great American design icons. So these are American icons. For example, the first one. What do you think is the first one? The picture number, the letter A. What is that? Why is la, picture la, A? La, the, the doll, uh -huh. uh, the famous doll that is called, uh, I don't remember, but it's a famous doll. It's a it's famous a, doll. Baker, Baker, I don't it's a famous doll, exactly. And they are going to to release a movie, right, very soon about that doll. Yes, it is. What is the name of the doll? Uh, no? Bar Barbie. 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 Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Barbie. Exactly. <laughs> so we're going to listen some information about Barbie. And what is picture number two? What is that building? Does anybody know? The Empire State? Yeah, probably. Is that the Empire State? Probably. We're going to check it. No. I didn't know the name. So is this not the Empire State? What is that one? That one is the one in Manhattan. But I don't remember the name. Okay, very good. So we are going to know more information about that, right? And also we have this a sign, love. Have you seen this sign? Where is it from? Love, L-O-V-E. It's very popular actually. Let's, it's like you can see it in, in keyholes and also in, in shirts, right on shirts. And it's from New York, I guess, right? And the last one, what are those? What are how how do you call those those shoes? How do you call those sneakers? What are those? Sneaker. Yeah, but do you remember yeah. like the brand? A Jordan. Jordan, exactly. Jordan, exactly. So they are really famous, or they were in the nineties. They were really famous, right? This. These shoes, right, Jordan, because they were they, they were from Michael Jordan and Nike, right? Very good. So we are going to listen to this, and we are going to listen a lot of um, relative clauses because they provide they will provide information about that. So let's listen to it. Let's see. that I cannot play it here. Let me see. Oh, it's here, okay. Five point thirty one. Barbie. Until the late nineteen fifties, most American girls played with baby dolls, which often limited their imaginations to mother or caregiver roles. At around the same time, Ruth Handler noticed that her preteen daughter was playing with paper dolls, giving them adult roles such as actresses or secretaries. On a trip to Europe, Ruth saw an adult figure doll in Germany and brought several of them back to the U.S. Handler had the idea that girls could expand their imagination and play acting roles with a doll that looked like an adult. 
so she and engineer Jack Ryan redesigned the doll for the U.S. market and called her Barbie, after Ruth's daughter, Barbara. The first Barbie dolls were produced in 1959 and sold over 350,000 in the first year. Barbie is still popular today, and billions have been sold around the world since 1959. Mattel Inc., the company that produces Barbie, reports that 90% of American girls between the ages of 3 and 10 have a Barbie doll. The Chrysler Building The Chrysler Building has been one of the most iconic New York City landmarks since it was completed in 1930. Architect William Van Allen designed the Art Deco Building for Walter P. Chrysler, who owned the automobile company Chrysler Corporation. In fact, Van Allen modeled many of the building's decorative features using Chrysler car parts as inspiration. For example, the decorations on the outside of the building for the 31st floor are fashioned after engine parts from a 1929 Chrysler car. Today, the Chrysler Building is still considered one of the best examples of Art Deco architecture in the U.S. In fact, it was voted New York City's favorite building in 2005 by Skyscraper Museum. In addition, the building appears regularly in movies and TV shows that film in New York City. The Love Sculpture In 1965, Artist Robert Indiana had an idea for a painting with the word love as the main focus. He decided to break the word up into two lines, putting the L-O on top of the V-E. He then tilted the O a little, and an iconic American design was born. In fact, it became so popular that the Museum of Modern Art and the United States Postal Service asked Indiana to create versions of his love painting for cards and stamps. In the early 1970s, Indiana made a series of love sculptures for display in public parks. The first of these love sculptures was placed in New York City on the corner of 6th Avenue and 55th Street. Additional love sculptures were placed in New Orleans, Philadelphia, Vancouver, Tokyo, and Singapore, as well as many other cities. Unfortunately, Indiana didn't make much money from his love paintings and sculptures. He never signed his paintings or applied for copyright, so he didn't have legal protection against the many imitations of his work. Air Jordan Sneakers When Michael Jordan started playing basketball for the Chicago Bulls in 1984, he had special Nike sneakers designed for him by Peter Moore. These sneakers were called the Air Jordan 1, or more simply, Air Jordans. They were red and black, the Chicago Bulls colors. Because the sneakers did not have any white on them, Jordan was fined $5,000 by the National Basketball Association each time he wore them for a game. Every year since then, Nike has created a new pair of Air Jordans to sell. In 1987, Tinker Hatfield took over the design responsibilities for these sneakers, and he has been associated with them ever since. Hatfield introduced the Jumpman logo on the sneakers, which is a silhouette of Michael Jordan dunking a basketball with his legs spread wide. In 2010, Hatfield designed the Jordan 2010s to celebrate the sneakers' 25th anniversary. 5.32. So we listened to uh, more information about Barbie, and now we know that this is not uh, the Empire State. <laughs> the Empire State is the Chrysler, right? Yes, I already the... looking for it in Google, and yes, I was wrong. <laughs> Yes, actually, we don't know a lot of places, right? But uh, we need to travel a little bit more, I guess. What is the name? Chrysler. The, the Chrysler Building. Chrysler. Chrysler Building. Okay. And we have the this sign that was uh, invented in the 60s, right? 
and that they had made a different version of it. And also the Jordans, right? The Air Jordans. I guess there is a movie also about these shoes. Uh, they are creating movies about everything right now, but uh, probably it's an interesting story. Now, let's see. It says, listen, look at the photos uh, of the four famous examples uh, of American design. What are, the, what are they? What do you know about them? And it says, now listen to Professor talk about them complete sentences from one to four. Ruth Handler, number one. Ruth Handler was the woman who? Who was Ruth Handler? Or do you want to listen to it again? No, it's related with Barbie. Uh-huh. So if we I are using, not see. if we are using she, uh, defining clauses, what would you say about Ruth Handler? Ruth Handler was the woman who redesigned, redesigned the, the doll that he bought in England and make a new doll to American people. Okay, very good. Ruth Hunter was a woman who, who redesigned the doll right for American people. Can be possible? Yes, yes. We're going to check that. If it is related to, to Barbie, you're going to be correct, Lee. Let's see number two. William Van Allen was the man who, I guess he was uh, mentioned in this one, in the second one, right? With the Chrysler uh, building. So William Van Allen was the man who, do you want to listen to it again, that part? The architect who designed the Chrysler building. Yeah, the architect who designed the Chrysler building. Very good. Robert Indiana is the man who? About the sign love, right? What did he do with the sign love? Robert Indiana. Is the man who? Paint the lo the logo of low of low in a low like a low culture something like, like, love, like love culture okay very good let's see and four Peter Moore and Tinker Hatfield are the men who about the Jordans. Who can tell me a sentence with a clause? Peter Moore and Tinker, Tinker Hatfield are the men who created, designed, invented. Who, cre who created the, the seeker? Uh, to to improve the the Jordan uh, uh, the Jordan work the Jordan the Jordan famous yeah the the the, the, the shoes right the air the, the sneakers right the tennis right probably they were the men who created or who, who designed probably can be also the Air Jordans. Very good. Did you pay attention to uh, all the details that they provide for all of these um, like icons, let's say like for Barbie or the Chrys Chrysler building or the love sign or the Air Jordans? Do you remember who was or which one was the most recent? Which icon is the most recent? Do you know that? Who knows? No, no right. Okay, no, we don't know, probably. And which is the oldest? Do you know that? Is it Barbie? Yes, Barbie is. Yes. 1950. 1950, right? Very good. Let's see. Do you think, uh, let's see, which icon has been used in many different products? Do you know that? Do you Did you listen to that? 
Love. Love. Love, exactly. Uh, four. Which icon was named after a family member? The Chrysler building? Yeah, it can be possible. Yes, the Chrysler building. Very good. Five. Which icon didn't make its designer much money? Love. Why? Do, you, do we know why? No, to be honest, I didn't remember. Okay, I no. don't remember. <laughs> you don't remember. Okay, we're going to check that. Uh, six, which icon had more than one designer? The sneakers, the Jordan sneakers. The Air Jordans, right? Yes, it's here, right? Peter Moore and Tinker Hatfield. Uh, which icon was the result of a trip to Europe? The Chrysler Barbie. building. The Chrysler building. Oh okay. no, the Barbie. That's correct. From the Germany. Barbie from Germany. Okay. And which icon used car parts as inspiration for decorations? The Chrysler. <laughs> the Chrysler <laughs> building. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the the most uh, obvious, right? So we are going to check. We are going to listen just one more time. Probably I will be able to play the subtitles. If you see any word that you think is not, um, like it's kind of complicated or you don't know, please let me know. Let me see if I can play it here. Just to make sure about the responses. And I will, I think that I will like to, I can activate the subtitles. Barbie. Until the late 1950s, most American girls played with baby dolls, which often limited their imaginations to mother or caregiver roles. At around the same time, Ruth Handler noticed that her preteen daughter was playing with paper dolls giving them adult roles such as actresses or secretaries. On a trip to Europe, Ruth saw an adult figure doll in Germany and brought several of them back to the U.S. Handler had the idea that girls could expand their imagination and play acting roles with a doll that looked like an adult. So she and engineer Jack Ryan redesigned the doll for the U.S. market and called her Barbie after Ruth's daughter, Barbara. The first Barbie dolls were produced in 1959 and sold over 350,000 in the first year. Barbie is still popular today and billions have been sold around the world since 1959. Mattel Inc., the company that produces Barbie, reports that 90% of American girls between the ages of 3 and 10 have a Barbie doll. The Chrysler Building The Chrysler Building has been one of the most iconic New York City landmarks since it was completed in 1930. Architect William Van Allen designed the Art Deco Building for Walter P. Chrysler, who owned the automobile company Chrysler Corporation. In fact, Van Allen modeled many of the building's decorative features using Chrysler car parts as inspiration. For example, the decorations on the outside of the building for the 31st floor are fashioned after engine parts from a 1929 Chrysler car. Today, the Chrysler building is still considered one of the best examples of Art Deco architecture in the U.S. In fact, it was voted New York City's favorite building in 2005 by Skyscraper Museum. In addition, the building appears regularly in movies and TV shows that film in New York City. The Love Sculpture In 1965, artist Robert Indiana had an idea for a painting with the word love as the main focus. He decided to break the word up into two lines, putting the L-O on top of the V-E. He then tilted the O a little and an iconic American design was born. 
In fact, it became so popular that the Museum of Modern Art and the United States Postal Service asked Indiana to create versions of his love painting for cards and stamps. In the early 1970s, Indiana made a series of love sculptures for display in public parks. The first of these love sculptures was placed in New York City on the corner of 6th Avenue and 55th Street. Additional love sculptures were placed in New Orleans, Philadelphia, Vancouver, Tokyo, and Singapore, as well as many other cities. Unfortunately, Indiana didn't make much money from his love paintings and sculptures. He never signed his paintings or applied for copyright, so he didn't have legal protection against the many imitations of his work. Air Jordan Sneakers When Michael Jordan started playing basketball for the Chicago Bulls in 1984, he had special Nike sneakers designed for him by Peter Moore. These sneakers were called the Air Jordan 1, or more simply, Air Jordans. They were red and black, the Chicago Bulls colors. Because the sneakers did not have any white on them, Jordan was fined $5,000 by the National Basketball Association each time he wore them for a game. Every year since then, Nike has created a new pair of Air Jordans to sell. In 1987, Tinker Hatfield took over the design responsibilities for these sneakers, and he has been associated with them ever since. Hatfield introduced the Jumpman logo on the sneakers, which is a silhouette of Michael Jordan dunking a basketball with his legs spread wide. In 2010, Hatfield designed the Jordan 2010s to celebrate the sneakers' 25th anniversary. Okay, very good. So that was uh, with some titles like the. Probably I will include uh, the 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 whole um, audio right here, probably for you to read it, because it has very different uh, words. For example, did you notice how they pronounce Nike? Because we say Nike, right? They say Nike, right? Nike. So they are those are Nikes, right? That's the way Americans pronounce the brand. And also we have some other words, right? Silhouette, copyright that we can notice there. So um, going back to these questions, which icon was the most recent? Um, actually was the Air Jordans, right? Over here we have here uh, the, others, uh, the other answers. Ruth Handler was the woman who designed the Barbie doll. Very good. William Van Allen was the man who designed the Chrysler building. Robert Indiana is the man who designed the love sculpture, and Peter Moore and Tinker Halfield are the men who designed the Nike Air Jordan. Um, it says here, uh, who is the oldest? Actually, the oldest is the Chrysler building, right? That is the oldest, uh, because it started around the 1920s, right? Um, has been used in many different products. Which one? The LOV, right? Because he didn't have copyright, so everybody started copying it, right? And the next one was uh, what? Who, which icon was named after a family member? The correct one was Barbie, right? Barbie. Uh, which icon didn't make its designer much money? The LOVE, right? The love sign. He didn't have legal protection. Uh, six had more than one designer. Very good, you, you answered that correctly. The Air Jordan sneakers. Uh, what's the result of a trip to Europe? Barbie, very good. And use car parts as inspiration for decorations. The Chrysler building, right? The Chrysler building. So we learned a little bit more about uh, these American icons. And also we checked or we know how we how we can use right there um the defining clauses right relative clauses to provide essential information like these ones right tomorrow probably we are going to study the non-defining we are going to speak a little bit uh we're going to uh have a conversation about other icons because that will be the objective for tomorrow's class so uh hopefully i will see you tomorrow 
eh, at, at eight. Uh, do you have any questions about this? Preguntas acerca de lo que vimos hoy? Questions? What does caregiver mean? Caregiver. Caregiver. Sí, caregiver. Uh, the caregiver is someone who takes care of you, probably. Okay. A caregiver, como las personas que cuidan los personas mayores. Okay. That's a caregiver. Thanks. Any other? No more questions? Okay, perfect. So I will see you tomorrow at 8. Uh, have a nice night and thank you for being here, okay? Hey, good, good night. Have a good night. Good evening. Bye. Bye.